So I want to put a elongated cylinder in here and Boolean that out. So what I'm going to do now is I can go to my custom menu. The reason I have my custom menu is I can do a cylinder of 8, 12, 16. You could do 24 and 32. The reason I choose these is when I put this on there, my new shift D, you're going to see with a cylinder of 8, 12, 16, 24, 32, you're going to have a line right down the middle of the cylinder, which is useful when you're working in symmetry and stuff like that. So that's one way you could do this. There's another way. There's a lot of different ways. You can append. If you don't have that, let's go out of edit mode, hit control N, and we'll just grab a cylinder 3D, go into edit mode, go to initialize, and change our H divides down to like, say, 12, and then our V divides down to 3, and now you've got a cylinder here. We can hit make polymesh 3D. If you want this to be a, your, a new insert mesh brush, just hit B, create insert mesh, new. You could also do it under the brush menu. And now you've got this one. If you wanted to draw out like this, which is sometimes useful, and in fact, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put a line right down the middle of this one. So I'm going to go to insert multiple edge loops, turn off interactive elevation. We'll go specified elevation of zero. And if you just drag in here once, it'll split right down the middle. So now I can hit control W, make this all one polygroup. I can snap to the side and we made this brush. We just made this insert mesh brush. If I snap this one to the side then I go to B, Create Insert Mesh Append. Now we have a cylinder that draws out towards me and a cylinder that draws out towards me with a rounded edge. So why I would might do that is if we go down to this mesh we were working on here and we grab this one and we pull out from the middle. Let's do Shift D. So if I pull out from the middle of this object, now we've got a cylinder that goes right down the middle and also cuts through. So if I hold down Alt and go to this Unmesh Mesh Center, it'll go to the middle, or it shouldn't go to the middle of that Unmesh Mesh object. I uh, also have perspective turned off. Um, and then we can just scale this down and just move this into place. So if I do Shift Z to bring this back and then custom one, and then we can use this to kind of pinpoint um, how big we want this thing to be. Now, as I'm scaling it down, it's going into the object. So I'm gonna scale it down and then I'm gonna scale it out this way. And then Shift Z and we'll go back to custom one. So now, it's going to be about this wide and it's going to start here and then it's going to stretch over. So let's fix that. Um, right now it's masked out of this object. So I can go in here with my move brush and I can move these around without annoying or changing these masked objects here. Uh, what I can do is go to split either mass points or split unmasked points. If I do split masked points, it's going to keep the object I'm working on and then split these mass points off into a sub tool underneath it. Now let's go ahead and turn off that use start groups. Uh, I guess we can leave these start groups on. You know what? Let's go ahead and just do delete other. I don't want to have to deal with all that. There we go. So we're just working on this object just to simplify and talk about start groups and stuff later. Um, so we've got this object here. So if I go to split unmass points, it's going to keep my mass points and then split these unmass points down. So when I'm doing live Boolean, you're going to want your top object to be your main object and then your other objects to either add or subtract from that object. So in this case, what I'm going to do, I was going to do split unmasked points to split this cylinder underneath this mesh. So I've got a solo mode. You can see I have my cylinder now as a separate subtool. So I can, I can alt tap between subtools here uh, to select them. That way I don't have, I mean, when I'm going through a bunch of subtools, um, you can also use Z scene manager. I use that at work. Um, I don't have it loaded here. Um, if you have a ton of subtools and you want to work with them in a, a little bit more organized way. But while I'm working on just meshes, like if I go back here, I almost never go in here and try and find stuff. It's like, oh, I want to hide this one. Alt tap it, um, tap the nameplate, alt tap off. And now I can just sit here and tap through. Oh, I don't want this one. Alt tap it, delete. Alt tap this one, go into solo mode. Or if I just want to work on, say, uh, this one and this one and not anything else, I can alt tap this one, hold down shift, bent arrow up to the top, alt tap this one, shift, bent arrow to the top, and then hold down shift, turn off these eyeballs, and then tap the nameplate and turn the eyeball back on. So now I'm just working on these two subtools. If I want to turn everything back on, hold down shift, eyeball off, eyeball on, and then alt tap, turn it off, nameplate. There you go. So that's why I quickly work with subtools here. Um, anyway, back to this one. We want to use this object here to Boolean out. Now I'm going to modify this slightly. I'm going to pull this right up in the middle between here. And I can even make it, you know, like, uh, let's scale this down just a little bit. Now, when we Boolean, we can do this live, so it's not a huge deal if we're perfect. Um, but in order to get the stretch shape, what I'm going to do is I'm going to control drag over half of the object. Um, actually, you know what? Control drag to unmask. Um, now, be careful. If you have Dynamesh turned on and you control drag, it's going to Dynamesh this thing. But we don't. So 
and I control drag and I hold down alt, it's going to unmask this part of the object and mask the rest. So that's a cool thing in 4R8. Now if I hit control and drag out, it's going to add, it's going to keep adding edge loops in here as we control drag out. So that's kind of like transpose modeling from Zebras 4R7, which you can still do. You can hit Y to turn the gizmo off, and then you can hold down control, shift, and then just drag out. So either way, but hold down control, drag this out, and let's hit uh, shift Z, go back to custom one, and how far out we need to drag this is about that far. So, and then we hit F to frame. So now we've got our object drawn out, and if I control drag, now we've got these two objects. So if I have a main object up here, you can make it a start group. It doesn't really matter if you're just working with a couple objects here, uh, but you can get in the habit, make this a start group, make this subtractive, then turn on this live Boolean here. I have that under Alt R. Uh, because you have polyframe turned on, you're gonna see the object a little bit, which is useful if when we start modifying this thing. But if you turn that off, now you're gonna see this is what the object's gonna look like if you were to go ahead and say, this is what I want it to do. Now, if, again, if you hit polyframe and then you hit E, let's go to unmesh mesh center here, you can use this to go ahead and start you know, scaling this. You don't have to have polyframe on. You can just go through here and just scale this thing however you'd like. And then um, you're also gonna see this kind of faceted in here. So this is where we wanna kind of play around with dynamic subdivisions. So I'm gonna alt tap this object here, hit D to turn our dynamic subdivisions on, which we talked about earlier. I'm gonna tap this one. Now, if I hit D on this one, it'll go and smooth those shapes out. However, it goes from curved and then kind of does a long bend and then curves again. So if we do shift D and then we go into solo mode, now we're back into just eyeballing this thing. It's because it's averaging these two very far apart vertices. So what we can do is we can go to insert, a couple different ways we can do this. Uh, we can crease these edges here. So if I hover over this edge, we can go to like crease, edge loop complete, and we can crease this one. Ah, eh, edge loop complete's not gonna do it. Let's do edge loop partial. We can crease this top one, this one, and then this bottom one, and then this one. So now when we hit D, and it's also not gonna have these ends creased. So here's another way to crease. Uh, instead of going through here and like doing um, crease, flat, and then outer targets, you can go in here, you can do crease, edge loop complete, and it'll crease all the way around. Or you can do it through visibility. So if I hold down control shift and drag out here, and then you hit the crease button that's under geometry crease, it'll just crease any open edges. So now when you hit D, it'll be nice and crease. And because we inserted it on this object here, it inherited not only um, any Dynamesh properties you may have had, which we don't, it also inherited the dynamic subdivisions where we had a crease level of three and a smooth subdivision of four. So that's kind of nice. So that's the shape we're getting now. So now we can see this, and if we want to scale this down completely, we can scale the object completely. And what we're going to do now is make copies of this. So we can hold down Control, and drag out a copy. And if you wanna see what it's doing, just hold down shift, or right, go out of solo mode and control drag copies out. If you wanna drag out copies in a specific pattern, what you can do is you can do shift Z, go back to custom one, and we've got our first one here. If I control drag out another one, and then I control drag out another one, it's not gonna be the exact same distance. So in order to ensure that it is, I can, um, I can't have access to that. Let's see, let's do tab. There we go. Now I can see it. So you can tab some of the stuff away while we're working. If I do this sticky pin, I can do sticky pin mode. I can control drag out a copy and then I can hit one and that'll put out another copy exactly the same distance out and then another copy the exact same distance out as I keep hitting one. So if you do shift Z, now you're going to see, and I go into solo mode here, you're going to see this is what I'm getting. So that's another way to do it. Another way to do it, and this is probably my preferred method, because it's less destructive, is I can take this object here, we can go down here to Array Mesh, and we can say, okay, Array Mesh, um, this is gonna be basically an instance of my object here. So if I go through Array Mesh, and then let's just go back into solo mode, and I say, I want to do a repeat of, I don't even know, we, we can just change that on the fly. So we'll do like a repeat of five, I suppose, or four. And then we'll do an offset in the Z amount, and if we go negative Z, it's going to pull these things in the Z amount here. So if we do shift Z and then custom one, and then we can play with this um, offset amount here. So you can just dial this in. You can also use your transpose line. So if I go hit W and then go out of the gizmo mode, you can use transpose to, that's gonna move the uh, original object around. Go to turn this transpose on. And now you can say, I want it to be 
exactly that much offset. So that way you don't have to deal with numbers. You can just use your transpose line to go through here. You can also see there's a repeat here. You can just crank up the repeats up or down, but uh, four was actually the number we wanted, so that's cool. Um, now with this one, if you go out of solo mode, hit Shift Z, you're going to see as we're changing um, these amounts, it's automatically updating that live Boolean on the fly. So that's useful. The other cool thing about array mesh is if we do solo mode again, uh, we can go through here. Um, let's say we wanted it to Boolean out, but then also kind of give me a bevel around this edge. So what we can do is let's turn off live Boolean and we'll do shift D. So you're gonna see as I'm modifying this object, these instances of this object are gonna automatically update. So we can go through here and we can do insert single edge loop. So we'll insert an edge loop here. Inside, I'll just insert a ledge loop here and then we'll insert an edge loop here. And now what I can do is I can take this poly group, hover over an edge, poly group, poly loop, tap alt. And now we can do Q mesh, poly group all, and as we're Q meshing this out, hold down shift, and that'll just give you, it'll just pull along that surface normal, giving us this kind of beveled look. So now if I wanna, now I'm going to solo mode here. If I hit D, it's gonna give us a very average look. So if I go into solo mode, and we turn uh, live Boolean back on, you're gonna see it's not exactly what we're looking for. Um, for example, let's go into polyframe mode here. So if I hold down control and drag, and then control tap to invert, and then we use move to kind of push that in, as this is updating, it's just kind of vaguely, you know, see how soft that fall off is? Not what I'm looking for at all is what the point I'm trying to get across here. So let's go back into solo mode here and let's add a crease edge loop complete here and here. So now when we hit D, we're getting a nice crease along here. So when I go out of solo mode here, turn on polyframe, if I control, I'm control dragging over these edges here, control tapping to invert that, and then, um, we can use this move here. So as we move this in, and we turn off polyframe here. So as I'm moving this in, see that bevel we're getting along this line here? So now it's booleaning, booleaning out and also giving me a bevel. And you can control the width of that bevel the more you push in. So this is no bevel. And then as we push in, it's basically pushing that bevel onto the object here. So as we push in, it's gonna slowly bevel that object out. So you can do both. So let's say this is the, I mean, this is very thin. So I would probably change the design a bit to give me a little more breathing room. It's not, it doesn't look very structurally sound, but whatever, demo time, right? So this is the live Boolean look I'm looking for. And now if I go out of live Boolean, this is what my subtools are gonna look like. I'm gonna have a start group and a Boolean, and then we're off to the races. So all I gotta do is toggle live Boolean render on and I can see what's happening. So the reason uh, and you could use this to just carve out shapes. So if I go in here and, uh, so this is a subtractive mesh, right? So if I go to um, brush insert primitive and we just insert a cube on this object here, uh, it's gonna look like nothing's happening. Oh, well, maybe it does. Let's see, let's turn off live Boolean so we can see what we're doing. So if I go in here and I insert a, a cube, oh, you know what? So here's a cool thing. Uh, as I'm inserting a cube on this object with this object selected, it's also inheriting the array mesh properties. So if I go through here and I do like a split mass points, now we have an array mesh of these cubes. So I can go through here and use this to like cut in as well. So if I move this out here and then we do, let's go ahead and crease here. So now as we're creasing those and I turn live Boolean back on, now we're chopping these multiple pieces out because we've got in another array mesh. So the other cool thing, if I go back into poly group mode and we do shifty and go through here and I can go, uh, let's go ahead and bevel edge loop complete here. And let's say we want to mask and pull up here. And then we want to move this down. So now when I turn Boolean off, you're going to see this is the shape we're getting. Or if we want it to be thinner, we can just scale it down and just kind of punch in little, little brackets under here. So now we've got, it inherited the array mesh properties, the dynamic subdivision properties, and the fact that it's a subtractive mesh. Now, if I don't want it to be subtractive, I want it to be additive, just go up here and choose additive. And now it will add that geometry when we do our Boolean. Cool beans, my Boolean on, additive, subtractive, or you can do an um, intersection. So it'll be an intersection of those two. And again, this is all live. So as I move this thing around, it's doing an intersection of those properties here.